Yeah. We're getting ready to start. Five, four, or just be quiet. Three, two, <laughs> All righty. And welcome to another installment of the Owner Schmidt Showdown. We are in the underworkings of Schmidt Saloon here in the back studio where it is dirty and I had to vacuum this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're here live from Schmidt Saloon and Davidson Brothers Music Hall, uh, hosted by. TheDPost.com streaming to you live from 6 to 7 o'clock each night on Wednesdays. Pretty interesting guest this week, Mr. Adam Lenort. <laughs> yeah. That's the biggest yeah, round of applause kidding. I think anybody's gotten on the show. <laughs> Any, yeah, What'd you, you know, expect? It's, yeah, it's the space of the room. <laughs> and uh, alongside of me, Mr. Dave Vigano, 2005. Thank you. Well, Dave, kick it off here for us. So obviously tomorrow's K-State game, pretty big game. Um, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Actually, I want to talk to <laughs> Mr. Adam Lenore. All eyes on me. Huh? All <laughs> eyes on you. That should have been your, your rap album with Pac-Man. <laughs> That's <huh>? right. <laughs> so you were a Mountaineer linebacker from 2001, 2004, Oil City, PA, we won't do the whole – give us the Reader's Digest version why you chose West Virginia. Um, I simply chose West Virginia because Don Nealon took a chance on me. Um, I didn't play football until technically really my 11th grade year of um, high school. Played a full year and um, had some other schools recruiting me. But basically Don Nealon said, listen, I know you don't have a lot of football knowledge. You haven't been playing the game long enough. But I want you to come down here and, you know, be a part of our program and – and wear the blue and gold, and he took a chance on me, and I said, this is school for me. See, Adam's from the old school. <laughs> He's from the Nealon days. Yeah. Converting to the Rod days, correct? Very true. And what what was the transition like with Question. between Nealon and Rod? I mean, I know both guys were very intense, but – I know it was a different spectrum as far as the coaching styles. Oh, for sure. I mean, it was, um, you know, Coach Nealon was that typical um, Joe Paterno, um, the old coach from um, Ohio State, Woody Hayes. He had that era of him. You know what I mean? That, hey, I've been doing this for 20 years where <clears throat> we um, we end up finishing out the uh, 2000 year and on a high note playing um, and beating Eli Manning who came in late in the old Miss uh, running Rebels down at the Music City Bowl in Nashville. And <clears throat> when Rich kind of – he came in, you think you thought he was coming in on a one-and-nine program, that we didn't just go, you know, uh, eight and five and win a bowl game by 20. So, um, you know, it was definitely two ends of the spectrums. Coach Rod had a lot to prove, which was uh, I can completely understand and, and compromise with. Um, but – um, you know, at the same time, it, it, they couldn't have been more different, which um, – and, you know, now that I digress, I'm, you know, 33 years old, I'm married, I have a child. God, they both old. Oh, <laughs> old oh, kid like coming right in there. Behind you. <laughs> right behind him. That, you know, th they both – in my opinion, they both came from someplace good, you know. They, they're, they were both real true mountaineers, which, you know, once again, oh, and I'm from the old school, and, I mean, you cut me open right now, I'm bleeding blue and gold, so – I know that for a fact. <laughs> I know that for a fact for sure. Um, getting into this, what you know, what this shows about is, uh, you know, the inside access, the inside scoop. You know, what is the locker room chat? What if you know? We want to see inside the Mountaineers. Give us a you know a quick jot down memory lane. You know, one of those you know pronounced memories in the back of your mind just the first one that comes off bat just whatever you remember that was like your favorite memory from back in the back in the day <clears throat> my favorite memory was coming down here for the first time because I had never played football once again I mean I've broken my collarbone my sophomore year in high school um it was right beside my offensive coordinator helping him call plays you know in Oil City High School where Ben Lynch also played with us um so coming down here and seeing football on a D1 level where the whole state's pulling for you. You're from a small town as well. Mm -hmm. It was just, I mean, that 
I mean, just it, it was yeah, it, it was intimidating. It was exciting. They wanted me. They, I mean, I'm Adam from Willow City, who never even I got one year of football underneath my belt. What, what do they want me for? What, why are they recruiting me? You know? I mean, just off the you know the top of my mind, it's really exciting seeing somebody like you who you know didn't really play in high school much. You know what I mean? And then obviously you're. You know, you're a large man. You know what I mean? You're a big guy. So the size is probably the attraction, you know, as far as the recruitment goes. But just to see how, you know, well you transitioned, you know, only having that limited uh, experience in high school, transitioning to the college level. I mean, how big of a jump was it from that, you know, coming into a D1 program? I mean, oh, just like you're talking about right now. Oh, I mean, guys, I mean, these guys from – Chris Edmonds from Pittsburgh. I remember coming down here. You guys are – I still, even in my senior year, couldn't bench 400 pounds. These guys are repping 400 pounds. So, I mean, you talk about a transition on strength, speed, skill, overall understanding of what a defense even is, you know. Um, I mean, it was it was a lot to take in, you know. Um, I'd like to think I'm a pretty smart guy, but uh, it was just – it was a lot for anybody to take in. And um, – you know, my, my, I'll be honest with you, my belief in the coaches down here at that time helped me, you know, move forward with, with my life and, and my career down here because I remember thinking, I'll tell you how old I am, <laughs> the, um, the, the scoreboard, the big new scoreboard over the, I think it's the south end zone, over the, mm -hmm. over the facility building, that was just started getting erected when I got here. And I remember thinking one day, I mean, I had – you know the schedule, Owen. I mean, you guys remember the schedule. We were in, I mean, just class from it's almost 8 o'clock in the morning till, you know, noon, 1 o'clock. And then it wasn't you – were, you weren't going home and doing anything else. It was just you were going to, the you know, the practice facility and staying up there and, and then your, your freshman study hall. So I remember thinking at one day – it was a nice August hot summer day – thinking, man, what? I could just be a construction worker. I mean, this is – you know, you guys got to understand, too, where I came from. I mean, I'm country as they come. So anything I would have made to myself would have been, I would have been, you know, I would have been proud. My parents would have been proud. My grandparents would have been proud. It, it would have been fine for me. So I remember thinking one day, you know, I could just be one of these guys working on this new scoreboard. What's wrong with that? Um, I had a couple teachers and some coaches and influential people in my life back in Old City that I remember calling them about that, and um, you know. Uh, but you got to seize the opportunity in front of you, and, and that's what you know. The um, I'm not not sure how much you guys you know went home your first year here, but I know I went home quite a bit. And you know, without West Virginia, going home wouldn't have been quite as pleasant. Yeah. So you know, everybody, you know, when you go back home for that Christmas break, your your true freshman year, you're down here. Everybody knows you're in the building. <laughs> oh, so that's a great feeling. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I, you know, I think of it like you said coming from a small town and stuff you know i uh transferred from a division three school uh and just coming into the whirlwind of what division one football really was um you know i would laugh that first year because i was pre pretty much my red shirt year yeah you know and i'm going through these practices having you know Brutal practices, man. Brutal workouts. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, man, this isn't really fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, this, isn't really, this yeah. isn't really like what I thought football was going to be. You know what I mean? But yeah. then once you start playing and you go to the games and you just get sucked into everything, it's like it just becomes a part of you. You it's know that, what I mean? It's and that you, culture. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's, – it's wild. Yeah, I, I never got to go home much uh, freshman year just because – well, it was back and forth between Wisconsin and Virginia, but uh, plus gas money, it was like you know ridiculous for oh. to even you know I was working like a job, uh, what's it called, Liquid Lounge or something like that for like twenty bucks a night. I was working <laughs> like five hours. He's gonna be twenty bucks cash at the end of the night, and I was like, gee, thanks. Yeah. You know, yeah. like 20 Better bucks. Bread, yeah. yeah. <laughs> buy like a, you know, what, four gallons of gas and that would be <laughs> done or whatever. Oh, man. Uh, Adam, thank you so much for, for coming today, man. I'm so happy to see you. And, I'm, you know, it's awesome you brought a crowd, man. You got a great <laughs> bunch of people house. here. Yeah. So it's I'm so happy to see you guys. Uh, just want to let you guys know 6 to 7, thedepost.com. 
Uh, I'll be streaming live from the thedeepost.com. Once again, I say that. Coming to you live from the dungeons of Schmidt Saloon and Davis and Brothers Music Hall. Dave, what's up tomorrow? I'm getting ready. I'm already geared up for tomorrow. I got my long johns on underneath. You know, I got my boots, my uh, hat on. Some people might think I'm homeless. You know, I don't know. They might be onto something. They could be onto something. My buddy Doug Slavonic today called me and sent me a picture of my camper trailer that's parked out front and goes, are you ever going to level that thing out? <laughs> it's been on a lean for a while. I was like, man, I've just been so busy at work. That's the only place I can just crash. I've been sleeping on the left side too much. That's what's the problem. So the, it's getting cold. The air's running out of the tires. Whatever. I'm rambling. <laughs> but uh, so K-State. K-State. So, okay. So K-State lost. They, they're coming off a bye as well. They lost to TCU 20 to 41. Um, I didn't really watch that game, but uh, the uh, Frogs from Texas sort of uh, they sort of punched them pretty hard. Um, now, I'm thinking about K-State. Before we do predictions, all that, they're a pretty formidable program. Bill Snyder has done a great job building out of nothing, like nothing. I mean, you talk about uh, – before we started the show, I said I've, I've been up to Oil City a couple times now, actually, and I like the area, but there's not a whole lot of – big city calm like you wouldn't go there unless you knew something that was there or whatever <laughs> yeah and i imagine that manhattan kansas is, is a lot like that but what it makes me think about is you played uh the, the old big east against the miami programs yeah give us give us sort of a before we step into the whole k-state deal the real big east yeah the, the real the beast, of the, east. The the beast, beast of, the east. of the east it was it was to me when i was just, in high school, watching football, that was a pretty legit conference. Oh, oh dude. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a whole other conversation. But, I mean, the Big East, middle, end of 19, uh, the 1990s to the middle of 2000s, I mean, that was a formidable conference. But tell us about playing Miami where essentially you know every week okay, or every game that you play them, oh, wow, there's probably four or five NFL guys playing. Shoot. And, oh, by the way, you talk about – not playing football, those guys have been playing football since they were like seven years old. Yep. So what, what what was it like playing against Miami? <sighs> very intimidating, very fast. Um, you know, you uh, you know, it was it was also a <clears throat> they kind of had a stigma about themselves as though you know they were the real athletes. Um, they had all the speed, all the talent, etc. But guys, in my opinion, from a core, they were the you know the the typical blue collar. Put your lunch in a in a in a, in a in a pail and we're going to work because I mean, you know, Rich always talked about, you know, 80 slugs in a game. They were going, they were going to give you, they were going to punch you in the mouth 80 times for sure. So on top of all their talent, you know, their linemen, their tight ends, their fullbacks, they had that tenacity, that, that blue collar athlete and, um, or the, the blue collar work ethic and, and turn around. I mean, there was just always, always tough games. And, and especially there in 03, that was a real tough one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and just stepping into K State uh, tomorrow night, uh, what I keep seeing is a team that's similar. I mean, obviously not the athletic ridiculousness. I mean, you talk about. I think one year they had was it like seven or nine guys. Oh, Miami. First round yeah. Of yeah, like that. I mean, that's that's comic book level like ridiculousness. Well, that's always been their thing. You know, they've always had the you know the athletes. They get the super freaks. You know, what I mean, uh, that's kind of what. Miami and the Florida States and all them Florida teams yeah. think they Texas. are anyways. Yeah, the Texas yeah. is. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyways, uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but but uh, tomorrow is going to be a tough game, and it's going to be about execution. Both teams are coming off of a bye, so there's no excuse. Okay, I mean, none of their star players are hurt yep. um, for either side, so it comes down to execution. Um I don't know. Let's start off with Owen. What do you, what do you want to see? Let, let's not get into what needs to happen because we it's don't suit up anymore, so we don't it, get that conversation. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be cold, I believe, uh, which I always like cold weather games because, well, it's it'd be different if we we're playing a Texas team. There'd be a little more, you know. Yeah. Kansas, yeah. They're still used to the cold yeah. a little bit, you know what I mean? But it's, but uh, it's going to. I'm hoping to see. I want to see ground game. That's what I want to see. Every week. I want to see ground You gamers. and I both. I just want to see some – I want to take it, you know, the pressure taken off Mr. White. 
I just want to see the pressure taken off of him. I want to see the ball get thrown around a little more. I want to see I want to see tough yards, man. I want to see those, you know, third and shorts that we go for it and, you know, impose our will, as you would say, um, on Kansas State and show them, hey, man, we're here to play. Uh, we got attitude running the football. Uh, will we see that? Probably not. Um, but I hope Clint and those guys are in rhythm and in sync. I hope the D's, you know, going to bring the big stick and hope for the best. You know what I mean? I'll be, I'll be there with my, my old man's coming to the game. Okay. All right. So, you know, the old wolf got me a set aside lunch. <laughs> yeah. Passes, you know, so we'll be uh, – Shout out to your wolf. We'll be, we'll be yeah. Feed the wolf. <laughs> we'll be uh, rolling big time on the sidelines. So. Okay. That's my game, which is the worst place to watch a game. Uh, to me, oh, yeah. personally, you yeah. just can't watch it. But it's fun to be down there, I guess. You know, it gives you a – past glory days and and i gotta i got <laughs> i really gotta get on your side too because i mean my father-in-law and i have been to a couple games on that's where they like to watch it yeah you so know what i mean after you get out it's more well what you know what are they if, yeah, yeah what do you want to do where yeah. do you want to watch it from and and if they get a kick out of it then that's cool for me exactly that's, you know what I mean? it makes exactly. it even better for me you got any choice words about uh, choice tomorrow words. tomorrow I, guys i mean i i hate to i hate to be uh, Basically, where I where I stand from about every game is is that we got to be solid on all three phases of the game. I can't stress to you enough about exactly offense has got to do their job. You got to be a team member. They got to be a role player. Defense has got to do the same. And and you know special teams, um, you know special teams and when we're playing, it's it's typically you know special teams are they're not an afterthought. And I appreciate the coaches. Um, at least when I played, you know, making that group feel like its own little team in itself. You know, I mean, kickoff, kickoff return, well, punt, return. I mean, punt it, return. it should be though. You Very know what true. I mean? It should be, and special teams have become a big part of today's game. You know, what I mean, a lot of teams are really iffy offensive, defensive wise, but hold their own and uh, create a lot of turnovers. Um, and you know, man. To be honest with you, that's how I kept my career even playing, you know, in the league. I mean, some of these kids can get, you know, a lot of valuable playing experience, you know, on special teams. So it is nice to see that, you know, they are starting to – it's not just kick the ball off and hope we tackle them now. You know, yeah. I mean, there are schemes and it's starting to become kind of a specialized position almost. Yeah, and it's a third of the game. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. 33% of the game. So it's like – you know, if 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 we're solid on all aspects uh, on all aspects of this game, um, you know exactly. I, I think we need to stick to what we do best, and I like our running team this year. And uh, Jeff Castillo always used to say about running, it's hey, we got more men's to block your men's is what it comes down. You know, if if, <laughs> if, if we can if we can manipulate our offense, you know, you, you got you got five five. You don't want five on five. If you're on defense, you want six on five. We got an extra guy blocking. That's how, you know, that's how holes happen. That's how, you know, the, the 13, 20, 27-yard run plays happen is, you know, somebody breaks or somebody on defense makes a, you know, makes a mistake. So it's about eliminate uh, – all around for me, it's about eliminate mistakes on, on all three a, uh, aspects of the game. Being solid, you know what I mean? There's, you know, a lot of games we played in, <clears throat> and I know you can probably – both you guys can, can uh, attribute this, is that they come down to basically five big plays. Yeah. Okay. You know, and the momentum with the crowd and, you know, usually it's a special teams, you know, out of those five plays I'm talking about, yeah. one or two of them is a big special teams play. Um, a real close, you know, a real close game is what I'm saying. You, you know, and if those go your way and, and, you know, you play hard and you, and, you know, you never give up. You know, I don't want to be cliched, but it's like you can't take a play off. And that was another reason why I think Don Nealon liked me was because I was one of these high motor guys. You know, what I mean, I was I was on the field every play, and I wasn't taking a playoff. It wasn't, you know, I was I wasn't taking a playoff on pun. I wasn't taking a playoff on kickoff return type things, um, you know, because <clears throat> and once again, now that I digress, the game is so, you know what I mean. The game's gonna always be here. Yeah. The game's gonna be here way after we're done even talking about it here in another. You know, say we don't even mention the game in another fifty years, it's still. God willing, it's still going to be here. So oh, for sure. that respect for the game is is what I've kind of <sighs> come to appreciate now that I 
you know, watch. And I'm, I'm an avid fan. I mean, I go to every Mountaineer game I can. It's crazy, and maybe you'll be able to agree with me on this, but I feel like when I kind of was like, all right, I'm done, I thought about all the plays that I loafed on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that was like horrible thought. Isn't that it? was like the only thing I could really think of. And it and to be honest with you, I really did play as hard as I could, but there was a few in my mind that I thought I had loafed on or whatever, but it was only like a handful of plays, so I was pretty happy about that. Yeah. But I mean, that's kind of how serious it was for me. It was like, dude, <laughs> I can't ever play again, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like it's over. Yep. But uh yeah, that was like the first thing that popped into my head was that, but uh, I was always real hard on myself about you know the loafs and all that stuff, so it didn't really matter. But yeah. Dave, what do you what what do you think? Also, I'd like to see turnovers. Yes, we gotta eliminate, eliminated and eliminate. made. Yes. yes, defense make them, to offense eliminate. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, I'm forever the bad guy, but <laughs> I mean, I, I I think that this is a game that the Mountaineers can do well in if they, like Adam said, like you said, they're solid and they don't make mistakes. Kansas State does not make mistakes. They're like they're like a purple machine. They don't make mistakes. They don't have a flashy offense. They're going to line up. You know what they're going to do, and they still do it. It's almost kind of eerie how they're good at that. They're disciplined, man. Yeah, and, Super and those are things – like you're saying those are things that I mean it makes me think of when we played here. Uh, I was talking with uh, actual, uh, actually, uh, normal Drew earlier in the week. We we're talking about Kansas State, normal and it's like, <laughs> you know, they're so, they're so vanilla. They're just so kind of blah. So yeah, blah. they you are. You watch their plays, and you're like, how in the world <laughs> did they score off of that? Like that is Pop Warner high school level stuff. But then you watch, I mean, to be honest, you watch the Mountaineers and you're seeing plays that are not being hit. You're seeing mistakes. You're seeing guys not finishing blocks. And that's where the gap is. So if the Mountaineers can close that gap tomorrow, they're there. I like seeing the discipline and, this. yes, the simplicity, but it's efficient. You know what I mean? Yep. They're not wasting time. They're getting, they're getting the job done. They're doing it correctly. They're not wasting time with penalties and, you know, bad throws. They're very on key, and that's a very scary thing. You know, if you think of football teams in college especially, if I think of, like, the simplest one ever, I think of uh, Navy. Oh, you know what I mean? What yeah. a simple football team, but how effective in the way that they conduct business. You know, yeah. super disciplined, making minimal errors, and they just drive the ball – down the field you know what I mean so we really need to be to me on point tomorrow because we need this win yes. this is not if we lose this game then it's like who knows what's going to happen I mean it's just going to be a spiral effect this needs to be the stop of what has happened I'm glad we had a bye this previous week to kind of get our head around things and regroup and get away for a little bit and come back but we need this win bad, and you know it's gonna take some. It's gonna take some, you know, good football by the Mountaineers to you know put a game together. Yeah, yeah, and you know when you start to talk about there's two games left in the season, and there's gonna be a bowl game. But this is one of those games where it can sort of taint what has been. Yeah, a we good, lose these next two games. Year. It's like man, yeah. what a promise to nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's just like it leaves such a bad taste in your mouth for the rest of the for next year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the the close score to Alabama. You know what yeah. I mean? The 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 heartbreak loss there. And we've had some heartbreak, man. That's this year. that's the crazy yeah. thing. It's like if we don't finish these two games, guys, this is this is this is why you play the game. And finish, I mean, how many times has your coach I mean, how many times has that come up in a conversation? It's like every other sentence. It's like finish, finish, yeah, finish. finish. You know what I mean? Finish. You can't it, and so many of these games that we've been in so close it's literally been just minor finishing points. Um, so, you know, we'll see tomorrow. Hopefully uh, hopefully the break was well needed and they took uh, advantage of what happened. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah, um, that's, that's why we play the game, right? That's why we play yeah. the game, right? Um, <laughs> that, that, well, fo that football never bounces twice the same yes, way. Yes, it right? never does. It never <laughs> does. Trust me, I've, I've – 
we've all looked stupid oh, trying to expect <laughs> it to come at you. Oh, and you're please, like, just keep going. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, it's on film, too. Um, we're at about the halfway mark right now. Uh, we've got a great crowd in here tonight. If you guys have a question, just speak up, please. Uh, let us know, and uh, we'll hopefully we can uh, that, answer it. I guess we got he one got a back question. here. He wrote it down, so I'm he scared wrote, yep. already. Oh, wow, what a super awesome question. Joe, thank you. Uh, the question is, how can the Mountaineers up their recruiting game before the Big 12? Right, Joe? Is this what this is what you wanted? Um, this brings me back to uh, Coach Rod a little bit and that whole debacle when he was – you know, who really knows what happened? I don't really care. I don't think anybody does. Perfect. But just uh, the way it was all conducted. You know, I know what Coach Rod was trying to do was bring what Florida and Miami and Penn State and the Texases, you know, those type of facilities to Morgantown. You know, it, this isn't a you know a southern state, so we have winter ball here. Uh, that drives a lot of kids away. To be honest with you, I don't know why it does. Whatever, you know. To be honest with you, good riddance because they're probably soft and we wouldn't want them anyways. But yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to me, I think we have really great facilities. I think we really do. Um, I think it's really tough to ask a kid from Texas or, you know, that part of the world really to make the trip across, you know, to a school like West Virginia just because it's a long ways from home, you know. And that being said, if the caliber, caliber of football is there, then I don't think there's a question with that. But I think being up in the air like we have the last, you know, a couple of years – you know, those are making breaks. You know, if you're doing nine, ten win seasons going to big bowl games, recruiting I don't think is much of an issue. Um, but, you know, like like I said, being up and down here a little bit, you know, who who really knows? I mean, where, where are we going with recruiting? I mean, do, have we been making the right moves? I think we've had some good, uh, you know, some good key players that we've picked up, but nothing really that's been inspirational, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I could, I could almost write a thesis on this, but I, I want, I want you to go, go first. What do, you, what do you think? I mean, well, you're from Oil City, PA. You're not from Pittsburgh or Philadelphia or DC or Baltimore or, or Columbus. You're from a, a small yeah. city in, in Pennsylvania. Um, I, I would hit back on some of the main things that that Owen hit on, which is, you know, what's the university? What's the football program? What are they doing? You know, um on the whole, to better the facilities that, that we play in, which is exactly why, you know, people ask me today, even out in the streets, anywhere, out in a bar, wherever you're at, that, um, you know, what would you think about Coach Rod? Well, how can you fault a guy for wanting to make the, the, the program better? How can you fault a guy for wanting to make the facilities better for the kids that are coming and, and the kids that aren't here yet? They're they're still in ninth, tenth grade and playing. So um, it, it is a tough issue. I mean, you want to talk about competition, you know exactly. Go to an Ohio State. Go no. to Florida. Every year yeah. they're making. They're doing a remodel or something. Exactly. It's just it's really tough for a program like West Virginia that yes they do have, you know, tons of people that will are willing to help out. But is it being spent in the right places? You know, are you going and visiting? You know, I know Coach Rod and those guys used to visit programs. And literally, they'd say they're going for coaching clinics, and they're going down to, like, check out the facilities. Straight yep. recon. Yeah. Straight re – yeah, exactly. exactly. You know what I mean? They're going down to see, like, how can we make this place just like this place? And, you know, Adam, what you were saying, I, I think it's just a matter of resources and a matter of somebody really getting in here and wanting 
to stick his neck out there. First, you got to win. You know what I mean? Exactly. First and foremost, you got to win. And winning it, solves everything. Right? Exactly, <laughs> and it does. You know, what I mean that. Who wants to be a loser? Nobody, obviously. But I mean, that's yeah. the big thing. Got to win ball games, and I think we got spoiled a little bit with Rod being here, and now it's just like because it seems like it happened so quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just it was just turned around overnight, and then now it's like we're not bad, but we're not, you know, great. Exactly. You know what I mean? We're kind of we're lost in the shuffle right and, now. And I think that some of the state feels that way too. Yeah. Because oh. when I know when I played, you knew where the state's heart was. Oh yeah. You know, and 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 right now I think we're in a we're we're in a position where you know we need to see some you know some some blue and gold show out and some people maybe that don't have it. But, you know, once again, this is going back to the, the, the West Virginia University. This is going back to the football program here. It's been here for a long time, and it's going to be here for a long time after we're out of here. So, Yeah, I think the sneaky thing, and you touched on it, the sneaky thing about the whole Coach Rod debacle, that should be the name of whatever Dirty for 30 comes out about that a couple of years from now. But the sneaky thing is, is that he saw it, and he was trying to bridge that gap before it was an issue. Oh, exactly. And, I mean, I, I I could talk about Coach Rod for a while, but um, the the beauty in that is that he was still getting guys here. Okay, Neilan got you here. You know, I mean, I came here from a junior college, and the one thing that sold me on this place, sight unseen, was that guys made themselves here. I mean, you talked about good riddance if you don't want to come to a colder climate. I mean, good riddance if you don't want to work. To, yeah. You know, to to earn your playing time or your scholarship here. You know, so for me, when we talk about rec recruiting, it always comes down to winning and vision. Um, I never, I'll never forget what Anthony Beck told me about Coach Neal and recruiting him. He was like, "Yeah, you know, you're a six foot four, six foot five, hundred and eighty-five pound guy from Pittsburgh." Yeah, well, yeah. I think he's he, he's actually from uh, Phil the Philadelphia. Okay, area. Phil, that's right, Philly. And he was like, uh, "You know, you can come up here. You might not play." This is a first-round draft pick, mind you, okay? First-round draft pick by one of four draft picks for the New York Jets. Like, you might not play to your senior year, but uh, we're going to put some meat on you, and we're going to teach you how to be a man and how to be a football player. What do you say? And Anthony was like, heck, why not, you know? I mean, <laughs> I might not play until I'm a senior. That's four years down the road. So imagine a grown man coming into your house and telling you four years down the road, you might be a player for me. And uh, he it, tricked it him. worked. He it tricked worked, him. and he he, he, tricked, he tricked him, him because Anthony played what fifteen years in the league, thirteen <laughs> years in the league. He tricked him. He knew he how good he was. He, he tricked. I him. mean, and, and, but that's isn't that isn't that what we're talking about? You have to have the eye. I mean, I think a training day. Forgive me. No, but, but you do. But you know, he's like, you got to have the eye. It's a it's a Rod had the eye. Nealon had the eye. I'm not saying Holgerson doesn't have the eye, but it's a special recruiting to me is. It's a whole nother world. It's not, you know, but it's at the same time, it's the same thing. You got to look at your playbook. What does your playbook need? Okay. Ooh, what yeah. do you need to succeed? It's not, oh, well, this guy's the best player. Obviously, that's why I'm taking him. Yeah. I think that's where people get caught up, you know, and we make the wrong decision. Last week with exactly. The Braxton Miller question. Yes. I mean, Braxton Miller is a great quarterback. Great. Does he, can he play in the air raid offense? Maybe you're a receiver. I mean, yeah. I'm just being honest. Yeah, and you know, you gotta you gotta get the guys that are your specific type of offense. And with recruiting and the whole coaching world and everything, it's crazy. It's like, who's going to be the coach next year? We don't know. Well, we're only giving you three years. You know, it's it's like you you never really get to see a coach's. Yeah plan really even develop anymore yep. because everybody just wants the result right now, now. now so now. it's hard to really get you know a grasp on where uh Holgs is going with this whole thing right now because you know he hasn't really you know just now he's starting to get his oh, yeah. guys oh, yeah. you know what I, I mean I tell people all the time I was like you may love Holgerson you may hate Holgerson you got to give him three more seasons before you can even judge him yeah because about the fourth he's in his fourth year and everybody has strong opinions Either way, whatever. But you still got to give him three more seasons, you know. And, I mean, that makes me think, when you – you coming out of high school, limited football experience, how long did it take you to figure out how to play the defense? I would say the, the whole – pretty much the whole time, yeah, right? I, I would say. So, imagine I, trying to teach 18, 19, 20-year-olds that. Like, it gets to a point where you got to give them time. It's one of those things where – at the end of the day, yeah, you have to fight against Florida, Alabama, the whole SEC, let's be honest. That's like a – 
NFL breeding ground, but whatever. Um, Texas. I know it's hard to get a lot of them recruits, you know, from the southern part of uh, the U.S. and stuff just because of the weather and stuff like that, which is a bummer. But, you know, like I said, I think what West Virginia needs to do is they need to stick to their roots. They need to go blue collar and they need those kids that have work ethic. They don't need five star recruits. You know, what I mean, they're going to be playing in crappy weather. Yep. You know, what I mean, they're going to be playing in tough conditions. They're going to be playing against tough teams. Why not? Not look at it like we're in the Big 12. This is what we need. Hey, we're West Virginia. You come here. We're going to hit you in the mouth. We're going to grind you out. And you're going to you're going to actually have played a football game when you come here. You know, to me, that's where the recruiting needs to go. But I'm not getting paid the big bucks. You know, what I mean, I'm just sitting here. And yeah, not yet. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll petition for that. We'll bring <laughs> all the staff back from the older <laughs> older cr crew. And you know. that, was, that was a great question. And I'll tell you, I always like being recruited by guys that I knew had been there and done that. Yes. That that to me. I don't care. I don't care if, if the the limited experience I had in high school or you know my senior year here, guy a guy that had been in the foxhole and been there done that meant a lot more. They you, held a bigger stick to me. You say that, and I was very fortunate to have a great coach when I was here, Calvin McGee. He literally him and Bill Stewart, Coach Rod, and those guys, but mostly Coach McGee made me into a man dude and he taught me how to be a great football player it was not about you know how fast or strong i was or whatever it was about just every day waking up and doing it again and showing that i was improving you know i want guys that can learn you know what i mean quickly they don't they make very few mistakes you know what yeah. i mean and it's not hard you know, simplify the offense or defense if you got to, you know. But getting getting back a little bit, I lost track, but Calvin McGee, great coach. When I got to the NFL, I thought I was going to have, like, the greatest coaching in the world. And it's different there. It's more of a good old boys network where these are all my buddies and I'm just giving them a position coach and I'm telling them what to do. You know, it was – it's tough for me. And I loved all my coaches, don't get me wrong. It's just – it's like you said, the foxhole. It's tough hearing something from somebody who's never done it before. And I'm telling them, hey, man, listen, I know I haven't done this long, but I have, you know, I don't have a 23 inch neck for nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, there's a reason <laughs> I built my neck up. You know what I mean? But that was a great question. He yes, thank you, question. Joe. And Joe's got another good yeah. one for us. Do we see ourselves coaching? I'll, I'll start with that. That, okay, so he just dropped so together. yeah, so yeah, another <laughs> another stumper. Uh, thanks, Joe. Again, uh, you know the question was um, through development of community uh, through our youth programs. Can we get teams for uh, for our league from there, or can uh, substitute out anywhere else? Um, and yes, and us coaching all three of us. Um, eventually, I come from a long line of coaches uh actually the guy who just moved uh, around the corner was my dad he coaches as well uh and then my grandfather was a high school coach for 36 years i would love to coach right now i can't sit there and say i do a good job right now i just don't think i'm ready for that you know what i mean because when i go into it it's going to have to be a full-time commitment yeah. to, for me to say i'm giving the most to the kids you know what i mean for me in my aspect that's right now i don't you know down the road yes i definitely want to get into it I, um you know i've been actually working with some of my buddies just on staying tight with you know playbook and the you know jargon and all that stuff and just keeping it fresh. Um, 
But we'll see. Uh, and as far as the youth comment goes, I think you shouldn't be able to coach youth football unless you've taken a test on certain no things. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I feel like coaches should have to go through training programs on how to properly tackle, how to properly teach a kid to, you know, lace his shoes up, whatever. I don't care. There, It seems like, and what I was saying about my, my father that just walked out, they are the craziest bunch of coaches in the world, dude. They all played at the college level somewhat at some point in their lives, and they are like – it's like mini Coach Rod teaching these kids, dude. I mean, my dad is just getting up in everybody's behind and just, you know, dogging these kids. But they love it, man, and it's teach and it's not overkill. It's just, you know, coaches can be so influential in kids' lives, and they can be, you know, in some aspects, m way more influential than parents just because it's a different relationship. Um you know, I'd love to see our youth programs have to go through some si type of courses like that to better themselves at educating um, our young players on how to play the game. Uh, I think we could benefit tremendously from that. As far as will that help the competition, you know, it's weird because the youth programs kind of deal with the high school programs, you know what I mean? And that's kind of like the end-all, be-all of it. You know, they kind of, if you're in whatever, this, you know, you're supposed to go to Morgantown High School, you kind of always run Morgantown High School plays. At least in Northern Virginia, that's how they do it. So when them kids get to, you know, the you know the high school level, they're already ready to go. You know I mean? They got their stuff on lockdown. They know the plays. Um, you know, so I think we could benefit a little bit from there. But, I mean, what, what do you guys take on it? I mean, for me – the community side of it, I, I do think that that, I mean, that's a tough question only because it's it, it takes years. It takes decades. Yep. I mean, for, to build that infrastructure in, um, there's a reason why Texas and Florida, goodness gracious. I mean, they're playing they're, – they have spring ball. It's all year round. Yeah, spring I mean, ball in seventh grade. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? I would have been – I wouldn't have done it if I, if I was a seventh grader back then. But um, I think it's an important part of – raising and i say raising I, that i don't want to sound disrespectful at all to west virginia college or, or high school football or anything but it's a way of making it so that you have more talent coming up through the ranks for the whole state so i mean i think that's a good point as far as me coaching specifically um after my playing days i don't know about you guys but after my <laughs> playing days i was like i will never coach past <laughs> high school <laughs> never in a million years uh, mainly because it's just it's I a mean, full-time job, man. It's Them two coaches. It's full-time jobs. If you have a family, you're, it's you're impossible, just, you're, man. Man, you're. It's impossible. You're, yeah, I, I don't. I don't ever want to spend that much time away from my my wife and, and my family. I don't want to do it. But youth leagues, I think that's the only way. That's the only level I ever want to coach at because you get to impress upon these young men and sometimes young girls um, how to play the game and what's really important. You're talking about Coach McGee. I mean, how many coaches can you just rattle off that told you the truth? Yeah. Because, I mean – And that's what you want to hear. That's what you want to hear. You don't want to yeah. hear – I don't want to hear – I want to hear how can I do it, how can I do it e efficiently, and how can I do it every time at the same time. That's all I want to yep. hear. I don't want to hear, oh, this, this, and this. I, w I just want to hear the truth. I want to hear if I'm not playing well. You know what I mean? I want to – the coach has to be completely honest with you. Yep. To, in my, if you want to better your athletes, that's how it has to be. Now, there's a way about going and doing that, and how you say it and stuff. That, you know, some people are more crude than others, you know. But <laughs> yeah. that's their coaching techniques. You're not supposed to drag a player off by their face. Man. Yeah, you would never <laughs> want to do that unless he deserved it. Very true. <laughs> Very you know, true. mine deserved. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, my last point, I definitely want to hear your uh, your answer, but the truth is one of those things that you don't you don't really realize until you're passing through the ranks. You're like, wow, so-and-so told me the truth, and you see it working on the field? I mean, that's I, – I don't, I don't know if it's not happening enough at the youth level now, but I don't – I don't know. I would like to see that change as well. Um, I, I tell you uh, – <laughs> double double-headed question there i think i'm kind of with 
uh, actually I know I'm 100% with Owen in that, you know, that self-acceptance of I'm not ready to coach right now. I, I just, you know, married, bought a house, have a baby. So I'm, I'm in that dad mode, you know, for right now. Um, my mother and I remember my grandfather telling me, you know, you should look into coaching. You're, you're a smart, you're a smart man. And we think, you know, they both would tell me you would be so great at it. Well, and I, I do agree with them at a turn, you know, a hundred percent really. But the self self acceptance for me is, is that I'm just not ready to do that because, you know, once again about the, um, uh, the relationships I remember, you know, that we ha- I had a coach, uh, Ben Lynch, uh, Kevin Krasinski. There was about six of us that would go up on Sundays and lift weights with with Coach Beers and his wife would be in there. And I had a unique relationship with him. And and you know, now that I look back, I really appreciated that relationship. I loved going up there on Sunday nights and and getting some extra work in. So, you know, I, I and and moving along through life, that's you know that. It's helped me. It's opened my eyes a few times, you know, on a few different occasions as well. So, um, you know, with the self expe- uh, self <coughs> knowing, you know, self recognition that I'm not really ready to coach right now. Would I like to? Yeah, I, everybody thinks I'll be good at it. So, <laughs> I mean, it's a great reason to do that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they just, I just don't think people understand, like, you know, when you're talking about coaching, you know. There's a reason coaches are crazy, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's their reputation. Yeah. You know, you're not your your reputation isn't built off losses. You know, it's built off of wins. And if you lose, you're a loser. <laughs> yeah. And it's you know that's the harsh reality. And if you really take that to heart, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. Me personally, I know I'd be a freak because. It means a lot to me, a player doing well and learning things. Like, and the way I learn things is crazy anyways. So I know the way I would teach would just be so off the wall. People would be like, man, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Like, physically, like, people can't run through walls, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Did you check your handbook, Owen? They can't do that. Yeah, anymore. you know, and, you know, a, a quick story about coaches that are dedicated. Andy Reid slept at the facility. Multiple nights during the week. I mean, you talk about dedicated, but, you know, in their lives, where does it end? Where does the coaching end? Where does your life begin? Um, That's another great point. You know what I mean? It's like how far do you really want to get go uh, when it talks with coaching? And that's what's great about it. You can do the youth stuff. You can do high school. You could do collegiate. You could try professional if you wanted to, you know, if you're if – you're, uh, even fortunate enough to get you know all those leagues, but uh, yeah, a lot of lot of serious work goes involved, and we all know those guys on, when they're it's recruiting season. Oh, dude, that's the I worst mean, they are not year. home Ooh. at all. They yeah. are on the road, working hard. I mean, they really do work, and it's and a, a, it's a lot of time away from like you said. You know, you're just not ready. You, you just had a you know baby. You know, things are going on. It's it's a lot of commitment. So. Great question, Joe. Yeah, for Great sure. Great question. Three Pete. Great question. I do apologize. Oh, yeah. You mentioned something else that's pretty interesting. You said, where does Brock begin? So you guys went to the pros. You left uh, college here. You left Rochelle Wynn. You went to the pros. Did you ever start living in between the gap? Or when did you start living and going, hey, I actually, I actually am in a, in, a, in a top, what, 5%, 2% of the world that's done what you've done? Yeah. Um. That's a crazy good question. Right there. Well, it is. You put it on landscape of the game. You're in the top two to three percent of the world. You put the coaches there. They're top three to five percent of the world. Yeah. To be honest with you, when do you start living? Um, probably not the best person to say. <laughs> just because. <laughs> just because. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> the the only re- the only reason I say this is because. <laughs> I do a lot of cross training, and a big part of my training was I snowboarded in the winter time. And I'm telling you, man, there's no workout better for your legs. Well, I can imagine than skiing and snowboarding. Dude. It's just, squat. I mean, yeah, you can blow your, you can blow it all out and end it. But I always loved football, but it was never completely my way of life. You know what I mean? I still had to do that stuff too because it was 
it, it was me, you yeah. know what I mean? And that's, you know, even in high school, it was like, yeah, I was doing the football thing, but I was also riding my BMX bike after practice every day and Loving it. destroying myself, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it Playing was like, your guitar, everything. Yeah, yeah, whatever, you know what I mean? I still had to, for me to get the full benefits, because football has been such a great transition for me. You know, I've been so fortunate and blessed to make, you know, some good money and have, you know, some money in my pockets to, you know, further it with opening businesses and stuff. But at the same time, yes, where is that? There's a fine line between too much and just enough and maybe none at all. I think it depends a lot on the the person. Dave, you want to talk a little bit yeah, about I mean, after college? I yeah, I mean, I went. I played arena ball, so it's a little yeah. bit different scope than yours. No, um, but not at all, though. It's but, still football. Oh, but one of the things he said is, you know, did you sit back and realize you're top two or three percent? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and run down, run down my story or anything, but I'm a junior college kid, came out here, blew up my knee my senior year, my only year here, and I still made it to arena arena ball. So if I would have sat there and thought about it, like, man, like. I've made it. I've arrived to a certain degree, which reminds me of one of Coach Rod's favorite things. He's like, do you think you've arrived? <laughs> no, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, geez. No. Like, oh, bad nightmare. But <laughs> um, but I, I remember even when the first time I got cut, I, I remember telling myself, I was like, wow, the crazy thing about my journey right now, because it's a journey, you know, I mean, you're talking about <laughs> snowboarding, all these other things that define you. Football never defined me, but it was so much fun. I mean, oh, it's for sure. so much fun. But the the thing that I would always lie to myself, one of the, one of the words that I guess it's a compound word you said was self acceptance. Um, if you don't look in the mirror, I mean the game will eat you alive. Whether you're a coach, Ooh. you're a player, whatever, it'll eat you alive because there's so many things that are nice and shiny that you can do, or that you can have access to that will, um, yeah, cut you up. And for me, I, as far as living my life, I just I wanted more, which is usually not good but i wanted more of my um improvement and my learning so the little time that i played i was always i mean i don't know if you, you guys follow arena football at all but like they have a jack linebacker what the heck is a jack I mean, oh yeah Sam, the game is Mike, crazy yeah. and will what is a jack linebacker yeah it's totally and different. just that learning is what drew drove me to just honestly become a better person uh when i first came here three three five stack i was like got to be kidding me i don't even what, know what that was what to be honest heck? with you but i was i mean i mean get me don't get me wrong we played a somewhat crazy zone type of defense in junior college but i still i was like i mean okay w but why is there five safeties <laughs> at a d a big d1 school but no. i mean for me it was really like honestly lying to myself while i was playing i was like okay you're you you haven't done anything keep keep going keep going keep going uh, I just really can't believe we've been sitting here for 53 minutes already. I feel yeah, like we just got here. It's the good questions. I, I mean, it's, the good it's, questions. it's a good question, yeah. and it's, I feel like we've been here for 10 minutes. I, it's fun. I need to, re you know what I mean? I need to rewind this and, and listen <laughs> to this again. We we've all made some good comments here. It's good hanging. What, I mean, you know, we're we're about eight minutes or seven minutes out here to the till we got to close up, and thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, Adam, thank you so much. Dave, again, wow. thank you guys so much. Thank you, guys. Uh, don't forget, uh, every Wednesday, 6 to 7, here live at Schmidt Saloon, uh, hosted by thedepost.com. They will be streaming this live throughout the week, uh, so you guys can check it out, too, as well. And right now, it's streaming live. Um, let's get a closeout. I got a question for you. Favorite roommate memory? <laughs> I give you I get PG thirteen. PG thirteen. Try to um, try to keep it PG. I gave you guys one earlier, I guess. Um, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to um, room with with guys from all over. I mean, all over this the nation. I mean, I just had guys from everywhere. Um, you know, Grant was in my wedding. Grant Wiley was 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 very instrumental friend and and still is a, is a big part of my life. He's crazy. Um, yes, very much. <laughs> Pause. I yeah. love him <laughs> very much, and, and so is his him, mother. He's so much. So fun. is Lynn Wiley. So shout out to <laughs> Lynn Wiley here. So, um, my one of my I was I was telling a quick little story before we got started that one of my favorite um, memories was I, uh, and inadvertently by living with Grant led me to Pac Man Jones. So Pac and I Woo! were Pac and I yeah. were roommates for about three years, 
and I was telling these guys that I came back from about a long weekend. Maybe I came back from a little summer break. I don't know. But um, Pac-Man had went and bought these KX80s, I mean, the, these these dirt bikes. And uh, the guys in the house, no one else really knew how to ride them. So I turned around, and I said, Pac, yeah, I grew up on these things. Let's go. I've ridden four-wheelers, motorcycles. I had a car when I was 11 out in the woods of my, you know, I'm from the country, man. I know how to work anything with gears. So I said, let's go riding. So we're over on the law school hill. We're riding all around. I mean, we were on, you know, streets in, in, in um, around where the varsity club is, around where the um, the stadium is, and – uh, we got called the the security the security police the security guards from Ruby. We got called because we were running up um, the old law school hill. So Rod got wind of that, and one time, I, I think the actual time he brought me into his office was we Pack and I actually rode the the dirt bikes to the stadium for workouts. <laughs> and Barwis was so like, rude. "What what are you two doing?" <laughs> Long story short, Coach Rod gets wind of this, and I mean, he pulls me up because I was a senior that year, and Pac-Man was still junior. He was, you know, later on he declared and became the sixth pick of that draft. Though, I remember Rod just looking at us, and especially me going, "What are you doing, man? I mean, Adam, you got a good head in your shoulders. You're out riding. We're trying to prepare for the season here. What what happens if you lay this down or, or this breaks or what? What are you two even doing?" And you know, sitting back going, man, I what was I thinking? <laughs> 22-year-old grown You're man. <laughs> having a fun time. I mean, hey. I always think of when Coach Rod would get mad, he would squint, and he would his voice would, like, go up a little bit. It's, uh, it's what hilarious. are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking, man? <laughs> yeah. He was – Oh, man. I, taking a chewing from him <laughs> was just – it was an experience. That would humble you real oh, quick. Oh, super yes. quick. I mean, you want to talk about a guy who could pick the word to make you feel like <laughs> that <this> big? big? <laughs> like, he had it right away, dude. He had it right away. What Such great times with, with those guys. I mean, just all the memories that we've, you know, been so fortunate to have and share with everybody. And, and it's so good for me, too, because uh, I, when I said when I got up here, Owen was a young buck when I got oh, here. Oh, I was. You know I what I mean? And and I know from when I got here, when you're young, the guys you look up to, it, it really doesn't even matter if they go and play in the league. It's just you were here and you did yep. it. And, man, I you know what I mean? You were here doing it when you were 23 and I was 18, you know, still – I mean, you know, didn't have a bone of muscle, you know, didn't have an ounce of muscle on me. But um, it, it's good coming back and seeing both young guys and older guys because, I mean, there, there's a brotherhood with this Mountaineers. And, I mean, it is. I know you guys understand it and we've all lived it. But um, you know, to the outside world, it's uh, it's nothing that you can explain. And, I mean, it, it if you sit back and look at it, it really touches you. And, I mean, that's why Morgantown's my home now is because I, I love it here so much. Likewise, so. brother. Hey, uh, once again, Mr. Adam Lenort, Mr. Dave Igano. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. I had a blast. Thank really you guys did. so much for coming out to the Owen Schmidt Showdown. Like I said, every Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. here live. Uh, apologize for the uh, small room because uh, we got a rock show going on right now. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> we'll convene next year or uh, next week in the uh, big room. So thank you guys so much again, and uh, take care. Thank you, guys. See you, guys. Thank you. Right on.